Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. All right, praise the Lord. So, let's, uh, let's open in prayer and then we'll get started. Father, we thank you for this opportunity that we have to come and receive from your word. Father, I just believe that tonight you will minister by your Holy Spirit that he will guide us, direct us, teach us tonight through your word. And I just believe that this will be beneficial, that, Father, this will be something that will be instructive and will be uplifting and encouraging to the folks, and we just thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We want to talk tonight about something that is very, very near and dear to my heart, and that is faithfulness. Uh, Matter of fact, the title of, of this message, we want to call it, Be Found Faithful. Now, that may not be perfect English, but I'm not entirely sure, but we'll go with that. Be found faithful. There's a reason for the way I phrase it uh, as we get into the scripture a little bit later. Before we talk about being faithful, though, I think it'd be beneficial for us to know what faithful meant. Um, Actually, I was interested to see that a definition, an obsolete definition of faithful is just what it sounds like, full of faith. That is the initial meaning of the word from way, way, way back. It's come to lose that part of the meaning, but it, it makes sense. And I actually like that because people who are full of faith tend to be faithful. Okay, But the actual current definition of the word faithful from Merriam-Webster's dictionary online is having or showing true and constant support or loyalty. I like that. Let's take that apart. True and constant support or loyalty. You know, Pastor has mentioned folks before that have come to him and said, Oh, Pastor, I'm, I'm for you. I'm 100% behind you. I'll do anything to help you. And then they're gone. Right. Well, that's great to be for the church, for the mission of the church, for Pastor Ed. But if you're not constant, if that support isn't constant and loyal, It's not really faithful. Now, second definition, deserving trust. Faithful people can be trusted. People who are unfaithful can't be trusted. And we'll talk about that in the third definition particularly. Deserving trust, keeping your promises, or, and I like this, doing what you're supposed to do. See, there's things that we're called upon to do, and particularly with regards to helps ministry in the church. Okay, that's, again, near and dear to my heart. That's one reason faithfulness, I believe, is so, so uh, near to my heart is because part of what God has called me to do is helps ministry. Okay, uh, I teach, yes, and I'm a teacher, but if I did nothing but helps ministry, I would be fulfilled because helps is a real ministry in the church. It's not an add-on. It's not an afterthought. It is an anointed ministry in the local church, and it is absolutely necessary. So faithfulness is a key. Now, uh, the, the third definition is interesting. Not having sex with someone who is not your wife or husband. Faithful, right? Now, that's the Merriam-Webster Dictionary definition, but you think about it from a spiritual sense. You know, God... In, in his word talks about faithfulness of believers and when they go after another God, he will use terms like a whoring after other gods. He'll say you're not being faithful to me as, as a husband wife relationship. So I think that ties in perfectly because our relationship to the Lord, we are the bride of Christ. Okay, He's the husband. We need to be faithful to him even in that sense. Now, let's look at the older definition. See, that's the current definition of faithful. I was interested to see they had older definitions. I mentioned the first one, obsolete, full of faith. That's good, but it is an obsolete definition. The second is steadfast in affection or allegiance or loyal. Now, that's really more what I really want to think about tonight when it comes to faithfulness is loyalty. You know, we have a vision here at Faith and Victory Church. 
And our vision is that people get it, right? That is, in a, a few words, the vision of the church. That people get saved, that people get filled with the Holy Ghost, that people get healed, that people learn to prosper, that people fit in and learn about the kingdom of God and everything that pertains unto that. We want to be here for people to get it. Okay, and that's the way Pastor has expressed the vision. And his position as pastor is the one to uh, basically proclaim the vision. He's the one to proclaim it because God gives it to him. And then he writes it down and makes it plain so that we can run with it. So when we hear the vision and we hear what the purpose of the church is and we can do something to help fulfill that vision, that's what faithfulness, like we're talking about here tonight, is all about. Next definition that's an older definition. Firm in adherence to promises or in ob observance, observance of duty that is conscientious. Now it's one thing to say, you know, and I'm going to use an example here. Anybody that's run camera, please don't think I'm looking at you or pointing to you. But let's say that you're, you know, you're going to run camera here in the, in the church. And uh, we haven't set up a schedule, but let's say we have. It's pretty much whoever's here <laughs> and has been trained can run the camera. But let's say we had a schedule that was laid out, and it was your time to be up to use the camera. And you thought, oh, man... I don't want to run camera today. You know, Sister Susie was going to be here. I'm supposed to meet her. She's going to be sitting in here. I wanted to sit beside her, you know. And, oh, well, I guess I'll do it. Well, you're there. You're doing it. But is your heart in it? Are you conscientious and observing your duty? Well, you're there. You're moving the camera. But, you know, I, I, I hate to say it, but I, you know, and again, I'm not pointing anybody, I'm not mentioning anybody, but I've seen people run camera and get talking to somebody right beside them, and the camera just stays there, and the pastor goes running off. <laughs> and they're gone, and the screen is empty. And I'm back there going, oh, man, i got to find somebody with a camera, you know. Well, I'm not fussing anybody, but it's a, it's a sign of not being conscientious and not taking the position which is in helps ministry, seriously. And it is a serious thing because here's the thing about our, our video ministry. You know, you look around at the number of people that are in most of our services, take that and multiply it by thousands. And that's how many are out there watching on video. So that may seem like a small thing, but you're reaching thousands of people every week that are watching those messages. So it's, it's very important. Now, fourth definition. Given with strong assurance, binding a faithful promise is an example of that. And the fifth one, true to the facts, to a standard or to the original, that is, a faithful copy. Yeah. Did you know we're to copy ourselves to others? Now this is, this is something that is brought up in business a lot. If you are a skilled employee and somebody comes in and the boss asks you to, can you take so-and-so under your wing and kind of train them? What he's asking you to do is duplicate yourself into that employee. Right. Teach them what you know. Tell them how you do what you do to be successful at that job. Now there's going to be some people who have the attitude, well, I ain't going to show them what I know because he might take my job. It's a bad attitude. A faithful employee will say, if I take this guy under my wing and I learn, you know, teach him, what I know, and he learns the ropes, he'll take work off of me. It'll make my job easier, and maybe I can do other things that will be even more benefit to the company. And as the company succeeds, then I succeed. So see, if I keep my attitude right, taking this guy under my wing and duplicating myself into him or her is a good thing. Same thing here in the church. And even more so when it comes to teaching the Word. I had an opportunity this weekend to uh, talk to, actually had an interview uh, with a friend of mine. He was interviewing me, and uh, he was doing it for his website. And I, he asked me, what is faith? And so I said, well, Hebrews 11, 1, and I went into what is faith, and I talked about that a while. And then he asked a question like, uh, one of his questions was, uh, how do you encourage people who seem to be losing their faith? You know, they're not... 
uh, they're not sticking with it, so to speak. And so I took off on some scriptures and went off in that direction. I talked about studying to show yourself approved, worm in the deed is not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, that you have to actually get into the word of God and put it inside you. That's how you get strong, because God upholds everything by the power of his word. If we can get the word of God in us, we'll be empowered to do what the word of God says. And so I went on and I you know, was teaching along those lines, off the cuff, extemporaneously, and after it was over with, he said, Wow, Dr. Bill, uh, you know so much about the Word. And I thought, you know, what I shared, I mean, praise the Lord for it. It was good. I enjoyed it. But it was something everybody in this church knows. Nobody, you know, would in this church would think anything that I said was deep revelation. <laughs> but to this brother, bless his heart, it was deep revelation. It was something that just basically changed his life. I mean, he was talking about, wow, I understand more now than I, I did before. This is amazing. You could see the wheels spinning in his head. And I'm thinking, bless his heart. You know, we need to be sharing what we know. We need to be duplicating what we know about the Word of God. He asked the question, how do you answer the question of people who say, if God is a loving God, then how, does the, how do these things, these bad things happen in the world? And I said, well, you know, there's a bad devil. <laughs> And I went into the whole thing about Adam and Eve selling out their authority. And, you know, this was a over an hour interview, <laughs> as you can tell. But at any rate, I went into the whole thing about how it all happened and how we are fighting the good fight of faith and, and that Satan comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And that uh, insurance companies say that it's acts of God, but it's not acts of the capital G-O-D God. It's acts of the little G-O-D God, the God of this world, because Satan is the God of this world system. He's the prince of the power of the air. And I went on and on and on. And he sat there like, wow. Wow. <laughs> and I'm thinking, you know, this is not deep stuff. But it's stuff people don't know. So we need to be faithful to share what we know. And see, a lot of times we think we don't know what we know. I don't care how short a period of time you've been coming to Faith and Victory Church, you probably know more than, you know, <laughs> half of the folks out there in other churches. Because all they're hearing is, you know, a uh, uh, sermonette and then go out and smoke a cigarette. <laughs> you know, which is exactly what it was in, the, in the Southern Baptist Church. You know, I thought it was interesting that in our tenets of faith in Southern Baptist Church, which were written in the back of the hymnal, by the way, it said, essentially, thou shalt not smoke. And yet all the deacons of the church were standing around out there smoking cigarettes, like a smokestack. And I always, as a kid, you know, I'm a little kid, I thought, how does that work? Well, it doesn't. It's called hypocrisy. <laughs> it don't say you believe it if you are going to act that way, you know. So, anyway, the point is, we demonstrate the Word of God. We demonstrate what we believe by what we share with other people and by what we teach one another, even over coffee at Starbucks. Not here in church necessarily. You're just talking along and somebody says, yeah, you know, I always get the flu this time of year. You know, you have the opportunity to say, well, you know, you don't have to go that route. Why don't you come here and let's look at some scripture and you can inoculate yourself against the flu by speaking the word of God. And they may look at you a little funny, but if they've never heard it, you have the opportunity to share it with them. And not beat them over the head with it, but just say, hey, have you thought about... I mean, one of the things I said during the interview was I was talking about the power of words. And he kind of looked at me like, words? <laughs> and I started talking about life and death are in the power of the tongue. They that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. All these scriptures that we know and we've talked about. Amazing. Well, it's just what you've heard. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Well, if they never hear, they're not going to have faith. It's not their fault unless we share it. So we need to be faithful to duplicate ourselves to others. Now, let me just hit a few high spots here. If we were to literally take every occurrence of the word faithful, faithfulness, you know, all through the scripture, we'd be here for a long time. So I had to pick some that just kind of hit the high spots. So let's look at the fact that God is faithful. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 9 Know therefore that the Lord your God is God, the faithful God. God is not asking us to be faithful when he's not. 
He is faithful. He is the most faithful being in the universe. All right? The faithful God who keeps covenant. And see, I love that. He keeps covenant. He makes a promise and then he fulfills it. He will always keep covenant. And steadfast love to those that love him and keep his commandments, which we've talked about the fact that commandments are uh, authoritative prescriptions. There are things he has told us. That's actual meaning in the Greek, authoritative prescriptions. And there are things that he's telling us for our benefit. Not to try to cramp our style, but it's to our benefit. So those who love him, those who keep his commandments, to a thousand generations. Now that's faithfulness. The thousand generations means he ain't changing his mind. He's not going to come up next week and goes, all right, no, no, wait a minute, King's X on that. I'm not going to do that after all. No, he's always going to do what he says he's going to do. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 9 says very plainly, God is faithful. Again, God is not asking us to do or be something that he is not. God is faithful. By whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Praise the Lord. Again, quickly, 1 Thessalonians 5, 24. Faithful is he, God, who called you and who will also do it. <laughs> I like that. Faithful is he who, that called you who also will do it. Amen. Uh, 1 John 1, 9. Now this is one that I actually talked about during the interview that I did this weekend, uh, which, you know, was posted on the internet. And I was talking about the fact that Jesus came, and I thought it was interesting because the way the Lord led me into talking about it, I, I, I kind of kept trying to think, how do I get this across without getting into terminology that maybe people wouldn't get? So I said, God is positive. The devil is negative. <laughs> okay? There's a lot of people, that's a revelation. <laughs> you know what I mean? So God is positive. And he determined that there needed to be a fix for the negativity that was brought in by Adam and Eve selling out to Satan. And when that happened, negativity came in. Well, guess what? We needed positivity to fix it. So Jesus came. And he took care of the capital S, capital I, capital N problem. Okay? And then I said, now here's the thing. He took care of the capital S, capital I, capital N problem but we still can commit little S-I-N-S's after we get born again. And he kind of looked at me. So I said, let's go over to 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, where it talks about in verse 8 that if we say we have no sin, then we lie and the truth's not in us. He's talking to Christians. So he goes on to say, if we as Christians who are already forgiven, that Jesus has already taken care of the capital S, capital I, capital N problem, then, if we confess our sins, He is faithful. So we're talking about faithfulness. He is always, always, always faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. Now, why is it just? Because Jesus already bore it. Praise the Lord. I couldn't bear it. Pastor couldn't bear it for us. Jesus is the only one that could. But since He did, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins, little S-I-N-S, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Unrighteousness. Righteousness, you know, means being in right standing with God. Unrighteousness is my standing with God is not on good footing. All right? We want to be in good standing with God at all times. Now, that doesn't mean you're any less saved. But I always like it th this example that I heard many, many, many years ago. Imagine a pipe between you and God. And he's pouring blessings and favor and all kinds of good things in the top end of that pipe. But as that pipe is coming close to you, it's clogged up with sin and unrighteousness and mess. Well, if we can get that pipe cleaned out, the blessings can just flow. Well, we're the ones stopping up the pipe. God's not stopping up the pipe. We're the ones that need to confess our sins as we commit them. Because I don't know about you. But I'm not perfect yet. Amen. Sorry. Even here on this earth, I'm not perfect. <laughs> like to be, wish I was, but I'm not. So that means that I got born again back in 1969. Absolutely no question. 
You know, I received Jesus Christ my Lord, confessed Him as Lord, believed God raised Him from the dead, according to Romans chapter 10, verses 8, 9, and 10. I am born again. I'm going to heaven. But, even though that occurred, and even though I became a believer since 1969, you know, I may have missed it a few times. <laughs> think I probably did. So I need to confess that as sins, and He's faithful and just to forgive me and cleanse me even now, of that and clear that pipe out. Now, still going to heaven. Yeah. Even if I didn't get the pipe cleared out. But I need the blessings to flow. Yeah. I need the favor to flow. So that's why I want to keep that pipe clean. So, He is faithful. God is faithful. Now, He wants us to be faithful. Let's look at some scripture about that. Uh, first Chronic, or excuse me, Second Chronicles, Second Chronicles, chapter 30, verse 1, verse 20. Chapter 31, verse 20. Thus Hezekiah did throughout all Judah, and he that was good and right and faithful before the Lord his God. Hezekiah was faithful. And he was a servant of the Lord. And he was a faithful servant. Proverbs 28, 20. A faithful man... Now see, I want to be a faithful man. And what will that benefit me? Well, it'll benefit me in the sense that I can do more for the kingdom of God if I'm faithful. And that's always a good thing. But there's blessings that come with faithfulness. A faithful man will, not might, will abound with blessings. If I'm faithful, the very fact that I'm faithful means I will abound with blessings. Now this word blessing in the Hebrew can also be translated favor. Blessing and favor. So, if I'm a faithful man, if I'm found faithful, I will abound, not just have a little, I'll abound with blessings and favor. Whew, hallelujah. But he who hastens to be rich will not go unpunished. I think that's interesting in Word of Faith circles particularly. I don't know what it is, but when I, when I was pastoring in Salisbury in 1980, oh my goodness, there was this one brother in my church. <laughs> Bless his heart. He got on every get-rich-quick get scheme there was. Somebody come in with a multi-level marketing thing, and this was going to be the answer that was going to make him whoo, so prosperous. And he grabbed me and he said, Pastor, you've got to come with me. I want to show you this great thing that God's going to do to make us rich. I rolled my eyes. Okay, here we go. And it was about selling insurance. You get all the, you know, cut out all the razzle-dazzle talk. It was selling insurance. I was not interested in selling insurance. And so I told him, you know, brother, praise the Lord. Hope you do well, but it's not for me. Well, of course, the whole thing was it was a scheme where you had to get people under you and that's the only way you made money. And he was really, oh, he was down about that. I wish you'd have gone in with me. And I'm like, oh, man. And it just seemed like word of faith people are, latch on to these get-rich-quick schemes. At least that was my experience back then. Now it's gotten better. Because now we're going to a good church where the <laughs> pastor's teaching, don't get involved in all those things, you know. He always tells the story about, you know, if you say that you're in a grave and kicking both ends out or whatever, and it's a rut and all this kind of thing. Well, at least we hear that that's not the way God's going to use to make us rich. But at any rate, if you hasten to get rich, you'll not go unpunished. <laughs> that's pretty powerful scripture. 1 Corinthians 4.2 Moreover, it is required in stewards... Now, I want to be a good steward. I want to be a faithful steward. It is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Now, that's why... I titled this, Be Found Faithful. We need to be that person that is found faithful. And notice though what it says. It is required. See, there's a lot of people that look at faithfulness as an option. Uh-oh. <laughs> Here we go. There's a lot of people say, well, yeah, I'll serve in the helps ministry at my convenience. That's not being found faithful. It is required that you be found faithful. Well, now why, particularly in health ministry, why is that a big deal? Because if Jeff is on schedule 
to run the camera. I'm using that as an example. That's kind of where I'm at right now, okay? If he's scheduled to run the camera and he doesn't show up that Sunday, we got to scramble to find somebody to run the camera. It not only impacts him not being faithful and doing what is required, it also impacts others who now have to be pulled maybe off something else that they need to do to run the camera to take up the slack. Now, I know Jeff wouldn't do that, but he, you know, he'll let me use him as an example. <laughs> so praise the Lord, all right? But you see what I'm saying? You affect others when you are not found faithful. So we need, we need to look at this and realize we're required. See, that's why I'd rather you say, you know, I don't want to run camera at all if it means I'm going to have to be faithful. You know, I mean, I, I, I don't like that, and I wish you would do it, you know, but I'd rather you tell me up front that I can't count on you. Right. Woo. Yeah. That's rough, but it's a truth. Because it just makes it easier to know that whoever is there to run it is going to run it and be faithful and pay attention to what they're doing. Amen? And the, I use that as an example because that's currently what I'm doing. It's the main thing I'm doing in the helps ministry right now is working with the, with the video ministry. But it's true of the nursery. It's true of youth ministry. It's true of cleaning the church. If the whoever is scheduled to clean the church doesn't clean the church, and we come in and there's stuff all over the floor, and you know, pastor used to call it sheep droppings. <laughs> <laughs> all the stuff the sheep dropped. <laughs> so all that stuff's all over the place. It's not a good thing. And pastor gets distracted because he's thinking, oh, I wish they'd clean the church. And therefore he's not teaching like he ought to be teaching and preaching like he ought to be preaching because he's thinking about all of that. We ought to take all that pressure off him by being faithful. Now I'm, tall, I'm preaching to the choir here. Y'all are faithful, okay? <laughs> but I'm just saying this is a teaching that we all can share with others. <laughs> you know, those that need to hear it, all right? It is available out there as an MP3 that you can listen to and download and so forth. Praise the Lord. <laughs> anyway, I'm kind of playing, but just not too much. All right, Galatians 3, 9. So then they which be of faith will be blessed with faithful Abraham. Abraham's our example of faith. And he was faithful. God wants us to be faithful. That's the point I'm trying to show you here. Revelation 17, 14. These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them, for He is the Lord of lords and King of kings. And they that are with Him are called and chosen and faithful. Now, I want to be with Him on that day. <laughs> you know, and I want to be found to be called and chosen and faithful. Now, uh, 2 Timothy 2.2. 2. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. That's exactly what we're talking about. We, when we are found faithful, replicate ourselves into others so that they become faithful. And they do what is required to do to minister the gospel. See, it's not just the person that, sit, that sits up here or stands up here and puts on the microphone and teaches or preaches. I thank God that I get to do that. And I know Brother Jeff does and others who have, who have ministered here just appreciate that opportunity. But you know, as wonderful as that is, as great an opportunity as it is, when pastor's up here is preaching and I'm back there running the video board, it's just as important and just as anointed. Now, Dr. Bill, how can you say that? Because the Word of God teaches us that helps ministry is a supportive ministry, just like Aaron and Hur lifted up the hands of Moses. It's a supportive ministry so that pastor can get done what he has been asked to do, what the vision of this church is. All the supportive ministries in this church help him do what he's called to do. And frankly, and he'll tell you this, if he were standing right here beside me, he'd tell you this, he can't do it alone. It takes the people cleaning the church. It takes the people uh, who are doing the children's ministry and doing the nursery ministry and all the other ministries of the church and the singing and the music and everything is required to do what this church is called to do. But what that's going to take is faithfulness. Now going back to the the video ministry that I've been talking about, you know, 
we've been at that now for uh, right at four years. Four years we've been putting videos on YouTube. We've been putting videos on the website. Now think about that. Every service for four years. That's a lot of video. That's a lot of ministry. And you know what? When we started doing it, it was just me out there with a pole and a little old camera on the end just doing this. Yeah. Service after service after service. You know my arm got tired. I'm serious. It would go to sleep. There'd be times I'd be holding that stick and I'd think, Lord, please help him close this service because I can't take this anymore. And it would hurt, and I mean it would hurt to the point you could feel shooting pains. And I just had to say, I am called, and I am faithful. And I had to do it, and do it, and do it, and do it. And you know what the Lord did? He showed us favor. We got these cameras, and tripods, and equipment, and board back there. I don't have to hold that stick anymore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Faithfulness brings blessing. So now we have these cameras. They're sitting on a tripod. People stand there like this. Oh, this is easy. <laughs> Compared to me with that stick. <laughs> but see, that's the thing. God blesses faithfulness. Now, I'm not tooting my horn, please. That's not the point of this. The point of this is being consistent, being faithful, doing what God has at hand for you to do will result in blessing. It will result in growth. I think it is absolutely without question that we can say that the video ministry has grown and grown and grown. And now we're talking about expanding it on the cable here in Greensboro. We're talking about expanding it further, maybe even down the road being on broadcast television. But that does not even discount what is available through YouTube, what is available through our website, what's available through all the networks, you know, internet networks that we're on. You know, iTunes, Blueberry, all these different networks that we're currently on. Uh, Stitcher, I could keep naming them. But the point is, we're out there. People are getting it. And we see the statistics, and, and it just keeps growing and growing and growing. It's like that I shared it on Facebook, the little graph that shows how many people are hitting the website and you just kept going do 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 going higher and higher and higher. It's a blessing. But I attribute all of that to faithfulness. Showing the Lord that we are able to do what He's called us to do with what we have and then He grows it and grows it and grows it. And the same thing is true of everything, every other ministry that's out of faith in Victory Church. One more scripture I want to talk about and that is the story in Matthew 25. And I'm going to read the whole thing, but Matthew 25, it's 14, verse 14 through verse 30. But I want to focus on one particular scripture here in a minute. But this is the story of the, the man who had a business, and he was going to leave town. And he had some servants. And he told the servants, here. Now, notice what it says in the scripture if you read the story. It says that he gave them according to their ability. He gave one servant five talents. Now, a talent is a measure of money. You know, we could say today $10, just as an example. Gave that guy $10. He gave this guy $5. He gave this guy $1. He gave it to them based on their ability. And to be honest, based on their faithfulness. Because look what they did with it. The one guy that had the $10, I'm going to keep using that example, instead of talents, because we don't, we don't know talents in terms of money. We think of talents like, I can sing, I can dance, whatever. That kind of talent. But he's talking about money. So he says, okay, here, you take $10. So the guy took the $10, and he, through his ability, he turned that $10 into $20. So he goes to his master after the master gets back home and he says, hey, you gave me 10. I got you 10 more. Now you got 20. And what did the guy say to him? The Lord said to him, well done, thou good and faithful servant. He was good. He was faithful. Thou hast been faithful over a few things, $10. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of your Lord. 
But then notice this. He gave the $5 to a guy with apparently less ability. Remember? Because he said he gave it according to their ability. So he gave the guy $5, had less ability, but that guy took it and doubled it. Instead of $5, he had $10. Now, what did the Lord say to him? Well, you did all right, but you could have done better. Look at this guy over here. He did better. No. He said exactly, precisely the same thing to him. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee rule over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Exactly word for word the same thing. Now wait a minute. This guy had $10, doubled it, and got 20 This guy had 5 doubled it, and got 10 But in the master's sight, they both did exactly the same. And they got exactly the same reward. But then there was the third guy. He only gave him a buck. He didn't have a whole lot of ability or faithfulness. And he proved it, didn't he? As he took that buck, he said, you know, my master's a hard dude. He gets money when he should not to get money. He makes money when he ought not. He's one of that 1% that they're all talking about. So I'm going to take that buck, I'm going to plant it in the ground, and then when he comes back, I'm going to dig it up and give it back to him. He said, you're a hard man, so I've just given you back what you gave me. Now, did he say, you know, you're not much of a servant. Why don't you go back and take care of the donkeys and sheep? No. He said, I'm going to cast you into outer darkness where there's dashing of teeth. It's pretty serious. Why? Because he wasn't faithful. Now, this is an, an allegorical parable. He didn't say a certain man. He said, the kingdom of God is like unto. So this is just an example. But if we take the approach that we're one of those two faithful servants, then the Lord's going to speak over us, well done, thou good and faithful servant. That's what I want to hear when I go to stand before the Lord. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. What he's given me to do is according to my ability. I'm not a Kenneth Copeland. I'm not a Kenneth Hagin. But what he's given me to do, whether it's ten bucks or five bucks, I'm going to do what I can with it. I'm going to be faithful. And when I stand there, I want him to say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee rule over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. And in that day in heaven, whoo, I'm going to be dancing in the streets when he says, well done, thou good and faithful servant. That's the one thing I want to hear. And when, you know, people talk about, yeah, what are they going to say about you when you're gone? I hope somebody will say, he was faithful. If nothing else, he was faithful. That, and I've told Belinda this, that's the one thing that I strive for, is to be faithful. And you know, I mean, we've been here at Faith and Victory Church since 1988. And as far as I know, except for vacations, hadn't missed a service. <laughs> With very few exceptions. Because of faithfulness. There's something about that faithfulness. You know, it is, in effect, its own reward to be faithful. And again, I'm not saying this, please, please don't think that I'm saying this to toot my horn. My dad used to have a saying, you know, he that tooteth not his own horn, his horn remaineth untooted. But I'm not doing it to toot my horn. I'm doing it to say that if we will keep that primary in our thinking, faithfulness, and the rewards that come from faithfulness, we can be faithful servants of the Lord and faithful to Faith and Victory Church to see the mission of this church get done. And I believe that is a worthwhile mission to get this church doing, in every sense, everything that we're called to do. Because, praise the Lord, we got a job to do. And the more I talk to folks, the more I see what's going on in the world, whew, folks need help. <laughs> you know, I mean, just, just brain help. <laughs> I've seen stuff on Facebook lately. Some of the things I've seen, I'm like, oh my goodness. So we need to be there, and we need to be faithful, and we need to be sharing. We need to be replicating ourselves to other people. And so that's what I wanted to share with you this evening. Just a few thoughts, a few words on faithfulness. 
Because I tell you, I believe that, particularly Pastor Ed, I think he would so appreciate knowing that we are constantly looking for ways to be faithful. Constantly looking for ways to be a blessing to him and to the ministry of the church and everything that we're doing. Praise the Lord. So, I just wanted to share all that with you. Been on my heart lately and particularly with various things that uh, have brought it to my attention is something that needs to be brought out. So I just wanted to share that with you. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.